Hey guys, Peter here from Sunny Valley Studio. As you might already know, I am preparing a new video course about making a 2D farm game in Unity, and I would like to share with you some progress that I have made in the project and some solutions that I have used to create it. First of all, I have changed the sprites for the Super Retro World Sprites Pack from Ichio made by GIF. I'm very excited about this because I have received an educational license so that I can share those assets with you guys for the purpose of creating this 2D farm game. Now, I have also made some changes to the field logic. I have swapped the selection sprite for a decent looking one. I can, of course, uh, select a couple of fields and create or prepare those fields. But now I can select seeds and I can now place seeds on multiple fields instead of on only one of them in front of the player. So I have created this additional logic as well as I can pick up objects and they will appear in the hotbar below. So I have the inventory kind of working. It is still a work in progress. There is no stacking, but again, it will soon be uh, created. Now, the biggest changes are in the scripts because previously in my player script, I had a prototypical logic in my perform action method, which basically means use an item. Previously, I have this pretty long block of code just to test my different tools. And I have decided that it is best to modify it first because later on I can add more tools. So now I have ended up with the inheritance tree when there is the selected tool of type tool and I just call on it use and passing this so this player or uh, basically this agent in the game. There is some additional prototypical logic to update the hotbar that I need to deal with. So the layout is that we have the tool class and we have different classes for different tools in our inventory so that if I'm using the hand tool, so empty or no tool equipped, I can perform different logic compared to if I'm holding the hoe. And basically, if I make a mistake here, I can go just to this one class and check what is going on without worrying that I will affect the player script or any other script in the game. I know that some of you were commenting in the previous levelog if I will be tackling the architecture of games in this upcoming course. Yes, I will try my best to explain different architectural solutions that I am using here. Another thing that was kind of tricky was those items. How can we interact differently with different items? Like how can I make sure that the stone can be only affected by a pick rather than picked up using the hand? Right now it is quite prototypical, but I have those small scripts pick up interaction, which will be invoked by a tool that affects this object. And here I can decide if I want to destroy this object or not. If I want to, I can select what tools can I use on this object. Right now it is hand, but the, I can add more tools later and I can decide that only a pick can affect this, as well as I have this on item picked up event, which I can connect with some cool visual or sound effects. I can also decide what type of item it is based on the database index of the items, which is connected to the inventory. Now in the code behind the inventory system, which is pretty early in development, we are going to be using the record type, which is new for C Sharp 9, which is available in, I think, Unity 2022 or maybe in 2021, I don't recall it correctly, which is great because this record type will automatically create for us the code to compare those item or inventory items so if we have the same two items with the same ID, it will be very easy to stack them together based on the comparison that is internally created by the record. We do not need to have any additional code for those. Now, I think it is worthy to talk about project management side of things in case of creating games. I'm using Miro, which is basically a collaborative whiteboard, and I'm using it to high level plan what I need to do. Here are my game mechanics that I want to create. There is the movement, the farm scene, farming, and I can connect it all with different game mechanics so I know what to work first on and what is connected with what so I'm not starting to work on the animals, for example, which I have uh, decided that I do not have enough time to implement uh, before I start working on the farming mechanic, which is selecting objects and interacting with them. Besides that, in Miro, I can also create the high-level logic before, behind different systems. Here is the inventory system, here is the tool system, and this way I can plan before writing code what I want to create, how it should work, and this is the high level overview and that gives me some idea 
of what I'm going to create next. Now, while Miro was a great design tool, Jira is the software that I'm using for the management of tasks. I have switched for, from Trello to Jira because it gives me direct feedback of where I am in the project. Now here is the, in the roadmap, I can see the dates and I have uh, selected some deadline to finish the project. And currently the red line represents the time that I have to finish the project. The blue line represents the time that I have, will spend probably recording the video course and putting it up together. But I can see here, for example, there is this FC farm level setup. And I know that I am behind the schedule with this. I should have finished it by 4th October. It is 6th October. But thanks to that, I can see using this orange line where I am right now, where I should be. And I know if I need to cut some features of the project or do I want to continue with those and uh, delay everything else. So this gives me a lot of information. Now, beside that, Jira also offers a, a scrum board, which is basically to do in progress and done in, I think, a much better way than Trello, because basically what I can do is go to one of my tasks. I have the subtasks and what I can do is select one of those tasks. I can estimate how much it should take me if here is 30 minutes. I can log time that I have actually spent on the project. Later on, I can analyze how much time it really took me to create different aspects of the project so that it gives me a better understanding on how to manage my next project. Jira can have a pretty steep learning curve. So if you want me to cover those tools in more detail or to, or to talk about project management a bit more, let me know down in the comments. That is it for this devlog. Thanks a lot for watching. Now, do expect the course to appear around November, but I will be posting more info soon on Twitter and on YouTube so that you have some idea of what is going on. Thanks a lot for watching. Take care. See you in the next video.